the Women's World Cup. It kicked off just a few hours ago. And Team USA will start the quest for a third straight title. That's tomorrow night. This morning, though, we focus on a trailblazing figure in American soccer history. Brianna Scurry won a World Cup and two Olympic gold medals as the national team's longtime goalkeeper. She was also the first African-American woman elected to the National Soccer Hall of Fame. For our series, Note to Self, one of my favorites, Scurry shares a letter to her younger self about getting through the most difficult time of her life and how challenging it was to be different from most of her teammates. Dear 13-year-old Bri, I have so much I want to say, but I want to start with what I love about you. I love that you are brave, probably the bravest eighth grader in all of Dayton, Minnesota. You don't back down from things because you are the only. You know what I mean. You are the only black kid in your whole middle school. You were the only black person and the only girl on that Pop Warner football team and your first soccer team too. This only thing is going to follow you by being the first and for a long time the only openly gay player on the U.S. Women's National Team. You will empower kids who are gay or struggling with questions about their sexuality. By being the only person of color in an otherwise all-white starting lineup for the U.S. Women's National Team, you will send a powerful message to young black and brown girls. You can do this too. Never let anyone set limits on you and never let anyone else define you. You are the youngest of nine kids. Coming along almost a decade after your next nearest sibling. Your mom is your heart. The songbird who sings hallelujah around the house and teaches you about kindness, generosity, and empathy. Your dad is your mind, the tinkerer, Mr. Fix-It, who teaches you the value of hard work and logic. When you were eight years old in 1980, you were in awe of the U.S. Olympic hockey team and you made a sign that said one day you were going to be an Olympian too. Remember how your parents responded? Go for it. will fulfill those Olympic dreams, winning a gold medal before a packed stadium in 1996. You will become a World Cup champion three years later. You will make one of the most iconic saves in U.S. soccer history in that game. Though afterwards, the network TV camera will quickly pan away from you so as not to show you hugging your girlfriend. I guess they thought the world wasn't ready for that. Something else the world won't seem ready for, the fight for fair pay. Right before the 1996 Olympics, you and eight teammates will refuse to sign your new contracts with U.S. soccer because of the stark pay disparity between you and the men. It will be the first step in a decades-long fight for gender equity that will culminate in a historic equal pay agreement with U.S. soccer. For all the remarkable highs you are going to have, you are also going to experience remarkable lows. You will win a second Olympic gold medal, but that sadly will be achieved with the heaviest of hearts. Not even a month before, your dad will die after a long illness. Part of you will feel totally lost, and you'll think about never playing soccer again. But you will step on the field and help your team win gold, because he is still right there in your heart. Then another low. You will suffer a traumatic brain injury after being kneed in the head during a game and it will end your soccer career. Not only bringing horrific headaches and physical pain, but the darkest time of your life. Once a world-class athlete, you will struggle to walk 100 feet. You will be unable to work and face terrific financial hardship and it will get so bad that one day you will do the unthinkable and pawn your Olympic gold medals. You will wonder if the ordeal will ever end and if life is worth living. But listen up, girl. You have nothing to worry about. You know why? Because your parents raised a resilient daughter. 
because you are as much a champion off the field as you are on it. You will wind up getting an experimental brain surgery that will alleviate your pain and you will become a tireless advocate for people suffering from traumatic brain injury. I sincerely hope that my presence here today will inspire increased awareness, understanding, and assistance. <laughs> Along the way, you will also meet the most important person in your life. Her name is Chris Azizos. She will help you get your medals back, but she will also wind up being the love of your life. You will have a beautiful home, a soulmate, a family. Never doubt how strong you are, Bri. Whatever you go through, whatever fears and doubts may arise, know that you will prevail. It's who you are, it's how you were brought up. And it's why you will go to Washington, D.C. one day and you will see yourself in the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture. It will be a testament to the far-reaching impact of your life. It will also be a testament to your bravery. You know why? Because you don't go from being the only to the Smithsonian any other way. Love, Brianna. Mm. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. What are you thinking right now? <laughs> she has lived through such highs and lows mm -hmm. and still so strong and so incredibly full of hope and joy. It just comes across in a way, and I'm so happy for her. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, me too. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and shout out to her parents, right? Oh, she my gosh. She raised a resilient daughter. Yeah. She, when she said, I'm going to be an Olympian, too, uh, they said, Go, Go for it. it. That's why I love that series that we do, that note to self, so vulnerable and transparent. Yeah. And her smile with, with her wife, that right there yeah. shows she is just in a pure place of joy and happiness, which she deserves. Yeah, and strength. Yeah. What, what a badass. I love That's right. That's right. You're awesome. Great piece.